Hello and welcome back to The Gallant Goblin. I'm Theo and today we're here to look at the Waterdeep Dungeon of the Mad Mage Map and Miscellany Pack. This comes with 16 card stock sheets designed for dry erase markers that includes 23 maps of the Undermountain, each one representing a different level of the dungeon. It also has three maps of Skullport, the city under there. You have 18 perforated secrets cards and nine perforated elder rune cards. And these are cards that you can use uh, during your adventure. We'll explain a little bit of that as we take a look at them and what they are. But let's go ahead and open it up. I'm gonna show you a little bit about what they look like. So there's some spoilers for the maps, but these are usually designed for DMs to look at rather than players. Uh, and then I'll use some dry erase markers to show you what it looks like when you mark the, the pages up. And let's see what we think about this. This has a manufacturer suggested, suggested retail price of $25, but you can probably find it a little cheaper online. But let's open it up, take a look. Here's an example from the package. This is level two of the dungeon, the Arcane Chambers. Now this is the same map that you'll find in the book, just put on a piece of dry erase paper that you can use for planning purposes. As you can see, this is a very functional map. The map shows you the whole layout. It shows you the rooms. It shows you uh, the number designations so you can find the descriptions in the books. It shows you features. It also shows you secrets and traps. So clearly this is meant for the DM to see only. This is not meant to be blown up and given to players. So keep that in mind. Note that the scale of this map is one square to 10 feet rather than the one square to five feet we may be used to. And now let's take a look at what this will look like after the DM has done his preparations using one of these maps. This is level one of the dungeon. I went through the book and used the information in there to prepare this map. So this is accurate to the book. I used my ultra fine dry erase markers. I put little red dots everywhere an enemy appears. And then I tried to nearby write in black ink what enemies those generally were. I used green dots to represent secrets that the players may find. I used orange dots and orange lines to signify where traps existed. And I also used purple marker to indicate where elder runes were found. And I'll talk about those in a minute. I also tried to designate off using different colors which areas of the dungeon were controlled by different factions. So the blue area is controlled by the bandits. The orange area is controlled by Xanathar's guild. And so you can see how this could be very useful as you are running the dungeon with your players. If you wanna use these sheets to track the dungeon progress over time, you probably wanna know how well the markers will hold up. If you take your finger and just wipe across a section, it'll definitely come off right away, which is good if you wanna make little changes uh, while your players are currently active in that dungeon. But if you take the sheet and put it into the folder here, and hope that it will last for a couple of months until they visit until they visit that level again. Um, it's still a bit of an open question on how well they'll hold up. I try to put it in here and jostle it around and rub sheet against sheet and did as much as I could and it held up pretty well. It wasn't, it was smudged a little bit, but not too bad. I think you may want to take a picture of your page before you put it away if you plan to come back to that level later on. But if you just put it back in your folder and check it out later, I think it'll be okay. This page shows two of the levels of Skullport, the city that exists in the Undermountain. There's not a lot of detail given here about what each individual area is, of course, but it does give you the number so you can find that information in the book. Here's the back of the same page showing another level and given the dungeon key for use when looking at these particular maps. This is the Elder Rune page. This is a perforated page that you can break up to make a deck of cards. Elder Runes are inscribed throughout the dungeon in various places that activate when certain players walk past them. Each Elder Rune can trigger a positive or negative effect and so this is indicated on these cards. Each time a player activates one of these runes, you're meant to draw a card at random and see what the effect is, or you can have your players draw them if you like. All of these cards are in the book, but you would have to photocopy them and cut them out if you wanted to use them. So this gives you a more convenient way to make this deck of cards. And this is just what the back of those cards look like. These cards comprise the Undermountain Secrets deck. As your players maybe overhear rumors in the Yawning Portal or talk to certain NPCs, they may learn facts about the dungeon that might send them on missions down to lower levels or gives them a plot hook to continue their quests in the dungeon. 
So again, normally you would have to copy this page out of the book and have it printed out. But here you can just separate these cards and create the deck yourself and hand them out when the players learn certain secrets about the dungeon. And this is the back of these cards. It's important to know what this product is before you buy it. I see a lot of people leaving reviews on Amazon and places expecting to get fold-out maps that they can put down on their table and use with their players. That's not what this is. None of these maps should ever be seen by the players. This is your planning tool as a game master. Now you do have the cards that you can separate and hand out as you like, and that's really well and good, but the maps are just for the DM. It's really nice to be able to have this in front of you behind your DM screen showing where all the enemies are, where the traps are, where any secrets might be hidden so you don't have to be flipping back and forth from the description of the room they're in to the map four pages previously as your players are going through the dungeon. So I find this to be really useful. You can also use it to uh, track where the monsters are. Some will move from one room to another, some will retreat, some will be wiped out and after the players leave that level of the dungeon with those monsters wiped out, certain other monsters may move into their place. So you can also use these maps to keep the progress of that particular level of the dungeon as the players move up and down through the Undermountain. So it's also good for that. Also, I don't think it's a good idea for the players to see these maps anyway on the table. Uh, seeing the entire level of the dungeon laid out that way and just playing the game like a board game where you're moving square to square to square for the entire time that they're in the level uh, removes a lot of the immersion, a lot of the imagination that can go into the game. You can use this to see which rooms you may want to draw out for a particular battle, um, but you certainly don't need a battle map for the entire dungeon. A lot of it can be done with theater of the mind. So that's what this is. I think it's a great tool if it's... Um, if you know what you're getting. And so take a look at it. Let me know what you think. We're also going to take a look at the Ravnica map pack, so you can click that link at the end of the video. Also, follow us on social media. We set up an Instagram account where we're showing behind-the-scenes pictures and pictures of our cats, because, of course, we also have our account on Twitter where we talk about upcoming videos and we try to engage others in the D&D community. And we set up a Facebook page where I hope that we can have conversations with the viewers about the products we've talked about and any other ideas you guys have. So those links are in the doobly-doo. I guess I can't use that word, it's probably copyrighted, in the description below. And also leave in the comments any questions or comments or concerns. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time on The Gallant Goblin.